Hi everyone, today is Sunday, so that means it's an interior themed video. So Sundays generally on my channel, I will do anything from a thrift flip or a charity shop flip, or it's going to be a room makeover, or it could be a furniture piece makeover. It's going to be anything to do with the home, or the garden and last Sunday I actually went out to some show homes in Las Vegas and uh, took you around six show homes and I asked you which one would you purchase if you had a choice and today I've got one two I've got two thrift flips and I've got one mini mini makeover um, they're all affordable which is what we need in today's economy <laughs> and I also want to say a massive welcome to all the new subscribers that have come over from Tina and Jane's channel in this last week massive welcome so anyway I'm gonna jump straight into the makeovers and at the end I'll touch base with you guys now I came by this vase because my husband bought me a bouquet of flowers and this is the vase that it came in so this is what I'm going to choose to use I like the little detail at the bottom so yeah that's the one I've chosen and let's see if this works here's the items you're going to need to paint the vase so we've got a stereo stick from Home Depot an old paintbrush uh, a pot to mix the mixture up in I picked this up from Dollar Tree it's a bag of sand it's decorative sand now I found this in the garden aisle I believe it's where all the bags of glass rocks are so it's right next to those and then I picked up this paint it's black it's acrylic and that was from the Dollar Tree also so let's paint okay so I've never used this before so I'm probably gonna have to play around with the consistency I'm gonna put the paint in first and then slowly add this up in and just see how it thickens up and then I'll do a little test patch on the vase. <laughs> I think that's a good consistency. We'll give this a go and see if it sticks. see this is going to be a messy project <laughs> okay I like the texture I just don't know if it's going to stay or whether it will start to slide down the glass so we'll just keep going and see how it takes and it might need two coats but so far I like the texture I'm obviously not painting, I'm kind of doing more of a dabbing. Okay, so this is the first coat and as you can see there are some see-through bits so I'm going to let this dry completely then I'm going to go in with just the black paint and see where um, see what it looks like at that point then I'll reevaluate and see if it needs a second coat of the sand and the black paint mixture but so far so good now when I did this I wasn't sure whether I should have added some Elmer's glue or school glue I think it's called 
um, into the mixture because I wasn't sure whether it was going to stick or not. However, this is dried on rock solid, so I'm really happy with this. So I think what I'm going to do next is just go in with some black paint and not add any more sand. And we'll just see what it looks like with one coat of black over this. But as far as texture goes, I'm really happy with it. So yeah, let me go ahead and do the black next. As you can see, I'm going in with this same kind of motion again. I've got the paint on pretty thick on the paintbrush. I just want to get into all those little nooks and crannies. Okay, I'm going to be painting this black and I think my first coat I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same acrylic paint just so I can get some coverage over this pattern. And then once I've covered up all this pattern, I'll, I'll then decide what I'm going to do next. So I've painted down into the inside, almost to the point where you won't see any further down once you've got um, either wooden spoons or some sort of floral sticking out. You can see the kind of coverage that I've got with the first coat. So I'm gonna take it all over the rest of the jar and then let that dry and then obviously need to go for a second coat. Okay, I wanted to do a little update on this jug. So this jug has now had four coats of this acrylic paint. And as you can see, there are still pieces that refuse to get covered. And when I say refuse, I've been dragging my brush over these areas and it just disappears. It will not go on there. And yet I gave this jug a really good wash. So I, I can't see how this can be grease. So what I've done is I've gone and bought some chalk paint and I'm going to give it a coat and just see if it covers up these areas. Let's see what this problem is. Well, this seems to be working. It's covering up everything. All right, I'm gonna go over and give this whole jug a coat of the black with the chalk paint. Okay, whilst the jar dries, I have picked up these from the Dollar Tree and they're laser cut craft icons. Um, they're made of wood and they come in all different um, designs. So there were some butterfly ones, some bird ones. I think they had some car ones. Tita. I think they had some car ones and I went for the leaves. Now I'm gonna choose this one here because it looks like a maple leaf. Maybe it is, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But then I also picked up this color and this color. And I might do a combination of both because I want to paint the leaf that color. So um, I'm gonna paint it probably this color first and then maybe add in some of this on top. Okay, so I just found out there's actually six, so there's two of each. I thought there was only three, so that's a good thing. Hmm. Where am I gonna put it to dry? Maybe I'll just pop it on there. I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, so that's the color with just the dark paint on so now I think I might just see what it looks like with a touch of the orange it's cute isn't it 
whilst the paint dries, I'm just going to do this next little step. Okay, so here is my kitchen window. At the moment I have cactuses that are actually doing really well. Look at that flower, that's really, really nice. Um, so yeah, these cactuses are doing really well, but I thought for autumn I'd house them somewhere else and do a little autumn display on the windowsill. So let me show you what I bought from the store. Okay, here's my first item. It's a little ceramic pumpkin. Got this from Dollar Tree and it came in three different colors. It came in the green, the orange kind of tones, and then the dark brown. I opted for the dark brown. It does have a touch of green on it, but I'm gonna flip that to the back side so you can't see the green. And uh, yeah, I think this actually goes really well with the little vases that I've chosen. So uh, yeah, $1.25 for this item. Next from Target was this little vase with some greenery. You can see the different colours here. Now this was $5.99 and I thought this was the perfect height. This set the tone for the rest of the items that I bought. So pretty much everything else I bought to go with this. But I thought this was really nice. For $5.99 you can't beat it. I mean little sprigs of foliage. That can sometimes cost you $5.99 and then the jar too. So yeah, I thought this was actually a really good deal. So yeah, this was from Target. The next items were from Hobby Lobby. Now these were all 50% off. So originally this was $3.99. So I paid $2. How stinking cute is this? I really, really like the shape of this and I love the detail on it too. And when the sun catches this, glass it's gonna look so pretty I think uh, hopefully fingers crossed but yeah I really like that and again it's the same height as my little vase from Target so that was from Ho uh, Hobby Lobby this also was from Hobby Lobby I think this is a votive candle holder this was this also was $3.99 but 50% off again See the same colour theme we're going for here. Um, yeah, I really like that. So that could be used as a little vase. You know when you have a bouquet of flowers and they all start dying off and you can just snip the little flowers? I usually pop them in a smaller vase on my windowsill. So yeah, that was $2 too. Next, this one was $5.99 originally, so I paid $3 for this. Again, I love the detail on the glass. And this one has a little gold rim. But yeah, again, that can be used as a candle. You could put like a votive in that. No, not a votive, what are they called? A stick candle, you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, I like that. Then lastly, oh, this. Uh, this was $3.99 again. How cute is this? Again, you could use this as a little glass if you wanted to. So I'm gonna style these real quickly. I need to find a home for the cactuses because if I move them out in the sunlight, pretty sure they're gonna die on me. So let's move the cactuses. <laughs> What 
do you think? I really like this. And I might even collect um, a couple more just to fill in the gaps. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll find something at the thrift store. Yeah, I really like this. And do you remember, I purchased this last year. I got that from Home Goods, so I saved it. Okay, so for this next project, we are going to attempt <laughs> to make uh, two pumpkin pillows. Now, I was inspired when I went to Target and hopefully I've still got this clip on my phone. And if so, I'm going to insert that clip right now. I hope I'm not just sat here pointing it at an empty space. <laughs> anyway, um, I went to Hobby Lobby and what I did was I went to see if they had some remnants and they did. Let me show you what I got. So first of all, I got a beige color, a torpy beige. And for this piece of fabric, it was four, uh, 54 inches by 20 inches and it was $3. And then the second one I got was, this is really nice and soft, this one. This one was 60 inches by 23 inches. And this was four dollars and twelve cents okay so this part here is going to be the 23 inches so just to make it into a square simply take the bottom corner and fold it up and now you have a square so what i'll do is i'll just cut on this line right here Now, because this is a remnant, um, you can see it is uneven. Um, it's longer here than it is here. So I'm gonna just straighten off the edges. The next step is to turn over the material, put the two right sides together. So when you, when you say right sides, meaning this is the side that you want to show. So if you put those on the inside, I'm going to quickly give this a pin. Okay, so right now it's a rectangle. I really need to make this into a square. So the first thing I'm going to do is sew the side seam and if you've got a sewing machine go ahead and use your sewing machine to do this. So I've sewn down the seam, next I'm going to take all your pins out. Okay so next now we're going to sew down the bottom but only on a single layer at a time. We're going to go all the way around and then we're going to pull the thread and gather all the material. So this is gonna be the top. I need to be able to stick the stalk through here and we'll talk about the stalk in a minute. Okay, next we're gonna do the stalk. Now I went to the store and purchased these from Hobby Lobby. They are unicorn horns, there's four in a pack. I can't remember how, oh, 3.99, there we go. This, um, this was from the dollar store. So $1.25 for this. Go around the edge with the glue. This is generally where I burn myself. I'm going to leave the loose fabric on here because we're gonna wrap this in string. Now I bought this from the dollar store also. Um, $1.25 again. Okay, so this is the unicorn horn, the unicorn horn. Um, so I did one going up and then I started to come back down. I only went to here because I think only this much of the stalk is going to show 
coming through the pillow. But then what I did was I did a really big blob of um, glue and I just circled the string. So I'm gonna push this through the pillow now. Okay, I think that's all I need. So now I have an old cushion. Where did I put it? Oh, over there. Um, to use for the stuffing. So let me go get that real quick. Okay, so next now, um, I'm gonna do the running stitch on the other end. You could have done both at the same time. Um, I just chose not to, I don't know why. Anywho, let's go ahead and do the running stitch down this end. So here, I'm literally just going over the same stitch four and five times. That holds it in place. It's not gonna undo, it's not going anywhere. I'm giving it a nice, good tug. It's not going anywhere. So now we're just gonna do the running stitch. Nice, big, wide ones. I'm back to the beginning now so I'm just gonna put my needle in so I'm doing in out in out it's not going anywhere I just need to watch myself that I don't uh, stab myself so I've got the opening nice and wide now I have this old cushion I'm gonna cut open and stuff this cushion I think that's enough. So now what you're gonna do, and gently pull this closed. And be careful not to break your thread. You just wanna sew this shut. So now you're just catching a little piece of the gathered material. And you're now sewing it shut. Okay, so now you've sewn it shut, take one of these hidden folds and just sew over the same stitch again four or five times so it locks all this thread in place so it doesn't un come undone. What do you think? All right, I'm gonna make the next one now. Okay, so this pumpkin I'm doing slightly different. I'm not gonna put a stalk on this one. I'm gonna use some wool to do the little sectioning on the um, pumpkins. So let's go ahead and see if it works. I wouldn't recommend this material because it's really, really thick and it's got like a foam behind it. It's very difficult to work with. So um, just an FYI, if you see this type of material, don't bother buying it. It's, it's too difficult to work with. Right, so, um, I bought the wool from Dollar Tree last year. So I think all I'm gonna do is just tie these sections off. Okay, so I hot glued the bottom and this is the top. So pumpkin one and oh, pumpkin two.
Okay guys, what did you think? Tell me your honest opinion, leave me a comment below. Um, the jug, that was a nightmare to paint. I didn't enjoy that project and I think that was the first project I actually came across that I didn't enjoy doing. So um, it purely was the paint, I believe, and the surface of the jug. The actual finished product, I'm actually happy with, I really liked. Um, and again, very inexpensive, that jug, that jug was $3 from the thrift store. Now the vase, that was a free vase that came as a bouquet from my husband years ago. Um, I, I'm so, so happy with that. I really wasn't sure whether it was going to work out with sand and paint. I thought I was going to have to mix glue. I had a feeling that when I picked the vase up, the sand was going to crumble off. It didn't, so whew, it worked. Um, I would definitely use that technique again. And my mini makeover on my windowsill, that was really inexpensive. Every jar was like two, maybe three dollars. And it's something that I can reuse or I can give to someone next year. So I love turning things over. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to keep hold of the item that you've bought. You can always gift it and make it over a different way and gift it onto someone else the following year. So anyway, that's coming to the end of my video. Um, if you enjoyed it and you know someone that enjoys DIYs or thrift flips, share my video, put it on your Facebook, put it on your Instagram. Um, I also have an Instagram that I'd love you to come over. Um, I'll put it right here. Um, this is the end of the video and I wanna say a massive thank you for watching. There may be one or two videos during the week. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how this heat tires me out. All right, I'll see you next Sunday if not. Bye.